In this video, we're going to model a parametric low poly style coniferous tree that we can use in the future in the next session to model um, an array of low poly trees. So, and we're going to put this into a cluster so that we can easily reuse it. Let's start a new document and we'll begin by constructing a point at the origin. Double click on the canvas to search and type in construct point. This point's going to by default build at 0, 0, 0. And we see the preview right here. We're going to begin by moving a copy of this point on the z-axis to the height of the trunk. So I'm going to put in a move command. I'll type, double click and type in move to translate an object along a vector. The geometry is going to be the point that I constructed. So I connect it. We see a preview of it moves a default distance of 10 on the z-axis. I want to make a parameter for how far I'm going to move it on the z-axis. The first thing I need to do is define that I'm moving it on the z-axis. So I'm going to type in unit z to move it along the z uh, vector. I'm going to connect my unit z vector to my motion and that by default it's 1. I'm going to put in a custom factor. I'm going to put in a number slider so that I can define the factor. I'm going to right double click on the left side of the number slider to set, make the settings for the slider. I'm going to set it to integer. I'm going to set the max to 36. And I'm going to give it a numeric value of let's say 8. I'm going to plug it in to the factor here. Now with the slider I can control the height of the translated point. This is going to be the top of my trunk, so I'm going to rename this number slider parameter to trunk height. I'm going to construct a line between these two points. So I'm going to double click, type in line, and I'm going to pick create a line between two points. The start point is going to be my construct point. The end point is going to be this translated point. There's the line between it. I'm going to turn this into a solid uh, with a pipe. So I'm going to double click, put in the pipe command, search for the pipe command. My curve is going to be the line. I'm going to define a custom radius. Before I do that, I'm going to cap this so that it's a solid. Right now it's not closed. I'm going to right click over caps and this will give me a context menu where I, and I'm going to select flat for the type of cap, which I can see now. Now I'm going to add a radius to this. So I'm going to copy this slider, copy and paste, move it down here. I'm going to double click and rename this to trunk diameter. I'm going to use a diameter because that's a more typical measurement for an ecological census. And I'm going to make this floating points two digits and max of, say, two. I'm going to set my value to one. I'm going to plug this number slider into radius. I'm going to double click on its wire to create a relay so I can make this a little neater. Like so. Now I've been I've put the diameter into the radius. So it's twice as thick as I want. Right now the diameter is two. 
So I'm going to right click here on radius and set an expression. I could, of course, put in a multiplication component and plug that in. But to keep this a little simpler, I'm going to right click on radius and set an expression. So I right click on radius, expression. I'm going to put x divided by 2 to make this a radius the diameter into a radius. Now this is the correct thickness. My pipe is ready to go for my trunk of the tree. Now the next thing to do is create the top of the tree and a series of cones to build up the massing of the canopy. So I'm going to move this original point again to the canopy height. So I'm going to make a new number slider. I'm going to double click to change its options and I'm going to make this canopy height. And I'm going to set the canopy height to maybe 30. I'm going to put in another move command. And I'm going to move this original point from the origin to a height of, let's say, 30. So I'm going to put in the unit z vector so I can move this to the right height. So I've plugged in the canopy height of 30 into my unit z vector, plugging the unit z vector into the motion or my move command. This creates a point now 30 above origin, 30 units above the origin. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to construct a line, double click, line. This time my starting point is going to be the top of the trunk. So I'll go to this move command. You can see the point previewed. I'm going to plug that into start point. The end point is going to be this move command. There's the line that's defining the length of my canopy. Now, I want to divide this into three sections. So I'm going to use um, divide. I can either use divide length or divide distance. Either one will work. I'm going to plug the curve, the line into the curve parameter for divide distance. And for distance, I'm going to, let's, first of all, we want to make a new slider. That is the number of divisions. I'm going to call this canopy divisions. And I'm going to set it to three. Now I'm going to divide 30 by 3 to create three sections, segments of equal distance. So I'll put in a division command. I'm going to plug 30 in as my A value and 3 in as my B value. It's going to give me, for divide distance, three segments of 30. Uh, three equal segments of 10, making a total of 30. There's my three segments. And now I'm going to construct a cone. So I'll type in the cone command. The base is going to be at each of these division points. The radius I'm going to define over here. I'll make a canopy diameter parameter. I'm going to set it to something like T. 
10 or 12. I'm going to plug, I'm going to plug that into my radius. I'm going to double click to make a wire relay. So keep this neat. Now I'm put, putting a diameter into my radius. So I'm going to add an expression here. Radius right click, expression, x divided by 2, commit. Well, now these are the right radii. For the length, I'm going to plug in this distance of 10. I'm going to add a wire relay here to keep this neat. Now, this doesn't look like a very good tree yet. Um, there's other ways to construct this, but I think the simplest is going to be a scale. So I'm going to just add a scale command. We're going to scale each of these cones so that they intersect and decrease in size. I'm going to plug cone into geometry. For the center, I'm going to use these points from the divide distance. Plug those into center. I'm going to add a wire relay so we can see where the center is coming from. And now I need to put a variable factor in. I'm going to hide all of this stuff before by drawing a selection window over it all, clicking on my middle mouse button to pull up this context window, and hit disable preview. I'll turn my pipe back on, however. Okay, so we want to scale these. I'm going to construct a range and a domain. So double click, range, double click and place construct domain. I'm going to plug the domain into the range. My number of steps. It's going to come from canopy divisions. If I mouse over range, canopy divisions was here. Oops. Canopy divisions back here. Now, I have four items in my list. So what I'm going to do is put an expression on my steps of 3 for x minus 1 so that I will have three items in my list. And I'm going to make a domain going from 0.75 to 2. I'm going to add a panel from params or double click and then make a panel. I'm going to put in 0 0.75. I could of course simply right click here and set a number or I could put a number slider for this. But I'm going to do it this way for a bit of variety sake. Using panels is sometimes nice rather than setting numbers because I can see clearly what the domain is constructed from. Then I'm going to plug, plug my domain into my range. I'm going to plug the range into the factor. There you see I have my scaled cones, but they're in the wrong order. So I'm going to go to range and reverse this range. Right click on range on the right side on the output and set reverse. Now they're looking good. A little too wide. So I'm going to reduce my canopy to 10. 
and I should probably call this canopy radius actually because I'm doubling its size with the scaling. Now my tree is looking pretty good as a preview. Um, what I'm going to do is add a custom preview to it now. So here at the end, double click, custom preview. I'm going to connect the scale geometry to this. I'm going to turn off the preview for scale. And this has a custom material on it now. I'm going to change the color with a color swatch. I'm going to use the English spelling for color with a U, color swatch. Plug that into the material. I'm going to click on the right side of my color swatch and find a nice dark green, somewhat blue-green, evergreen color for my Set. I'm going to add another custom preview for my trunk. I'm going to plug in the geometry here. And I'm going to add another color swatch, hide the preview for the pipe. And for this color swatch, I will add a nice brown color. So my tree is starting to look good. Now there's a couple things to mention. I've scaled this, but my cones are surfaces, not solids. So they don't look great yet. And there are also three separate geometries. So we're going to do a few more steps before the preview. I'm going to add a cap, cap holes on my conifer cones. I'll plug geometry into BREP and um, you can see they're now capped solids. And I'm going to then add um, a Boolean union, so solid union, to combine these into one geometry. And plug that into my preview. And we have our nice conifer ready. So to keep this organized, we could group this all. So select it all, control G to group. Maybe give this a label by right clicking and saying something like conifer. Um, I may also want to add something like a scribble to tell me what this is. So right click, scribble, double click on it. I'm going to type in a title for this and maybe set the font to Sego print and set the size to something nice like 48 me a title for this. And um, how can we neaten this up a bit more? If I want to reuse this and keep it simple in other um, grasshopper definitions, then I'm going to cluster these. So I'm going to leave the inputs here, my number sliders, and the outputs, my pre previews, and I'm going to select 
everything else inside of here. And I'm going to cluster these. So I've selected all of this. I'm going to right click and make a cluster. This combines everything in the cluster. All this stuff is now encapsulated inside of this. This is great for reuse. If I want to edit the cluster, well, first of all, I'll give it a title. I'll right click and type in conifer. If I want to edit it, I can double click to go inside. This is the cluster document. I can save and close or discard and close or return to parent. And there's my uh, conifer.